Welcome back to the shop, guys. This week on the channel, we're gonna build a flip-up tables for the Inventables X-Carve CNC machine. Now, my woodworking evolution has brought me into the maker space, so I wanna build this table that can save space in my shop. So I went ahead and kind of modeled this up off designs on YouTube, and I, the things I'm gonna do differently, I'm gonna add dedicated dust collection to it. I'm also gonna add a laptop stand that will roll out, and then I'll run an air hose to it and electricity. So if you've watched my channel, you know that everything in my shop has to be modular because I like to roll it outside on nice days, and that's really the dream. So stick around. I'm Stoner Erickson from Erickson Design Company. Let's build something. We're gonna hop right over to Lowe's and we're gonna grab three pieces of three quarter inch plywood. Then we're gonna run it back to my buddy Austin. He works at Lowe's and he's actually gonna cut them up for me. I've made him a little plans template so he can actually cut those out while I run and grab other supplies. We'll go ahead and grab some three inch locking casters. We'll grab some 4 inch 3 8 carriage bolts, some 3 8 flat washers, some 3 8 lock washers, and some 3 8 hex nuts. Back in the shop, I'm going to start breaking down the sheet goods. Um, I'm first going to cut 10 two and a half by 48 inch pieces. These are gonna be the under rails for the actual X-carved tables and the side rails as well. Then I'm gonna cut the cabinet side. I need three pieces. I'm actually building a cabinet and a winged end. I'm gonna cut those at 30 and a half by 20 inches deep. And while my saw is at 20 inches deep, I'm actually gonna cut the bottom shelf, which is actually 63 and three quarters by 20. On my bottom shelf, I'm going to do a quick layout and draw out where every piece will go. We'll go ahead and move to the Craig Jig now. This Craig Jig stand is actually built into one of my tables. It's super convenient and super handy. And since we have a lot of Craig Jigs to do, let's just get them all done. All right, let's talk uh, Craig Jig real fast here. So a couple of things you want to know about the Craig Jig and the way that you're laying it out. Get this light on. Um, so you have a corner. Let's say we have a 45 corner here and we're trying to go into this base plate here. If we run our Craig Jigs on the inside going this way, it doesn't give much per uh, purchase right here. It tends to want to break out. So when you're doing that, run your Craig jigs, you want to run down into the meat of the wood here. And that's just something that, a little trick that if you don't know, it's kind of important, it, that will allow for twice the strength. That's the way it's designed. So um, that's why they make the plugs. If it's on the outside, you can plug it up and clean it up. So let's keep cruising. I'm gonna cut and sand a notch out for the front rail of the table. That way it's kind of like a handle when I pull it up. While you're assembling this front table, make sure to leave enough room for your drill. You're going to need to drill your carriage bolt holes in and if your blocks are too close, you won't be able to get your drill in. I also left room here for two one and a half inch two by fours for legs that would fold out. Now that the table's built, I'm gonna go ahead and move to the cabinet. I actually put a clamp on the inside edge of the shelf because it never seems to amaze me that the Craig jigs wanna pull forward. So that clamp's kind of like a built-in stopper. I 
All right, so here's my little trick for my pull-out shelf. Basically, I get the shelf and turn it upside down, and then I grab two pieces of paper. I fold them in half, and then I cut them into strips. I lay them down on the underside of the pull-out shelf. Now, this is gonna be my, basically, spacer. Then I'll take some scrap, and I'll glue and nail it to the side, and when I pull it out, the paper will come out, and it'll be just a nice gap for a nice, tight fit. And over time with the wood, it'll get a little slop and be nice and smooth. I'm gonna attach the cabinet to the bottom shelf. I'm using a spacer in between there just so I have the right distance, and then I'll use some clamps to square it up. I'm gonna cut a full three quarter inch back. This will give it some major strength and rigidity. The rest of the assembly is pretty straightforward here. I'm gonna add a back rail, a front rail. Uh, I'm doing this on the table saw, like I said, because it's a flat surface, but I actually need to cut a piece down to two inches, and luckily I can slide this out of the way, use the table saw, and then slide it back. If you like fun and creative videos like this, hit that subscribe button, do it, and do it now. Plus, if you want to support the channel, I have a store, Erickson Design Company backslash merch on Streamlabs. You can get hats, t-shirts, stickers. Also, check me out on Instagram. I'm doing previews to all these projects, and it's a great way to stay involved. I'm going to go ahead and attach the casters. I actually need some washers because the screws I have are a little too small. So here's something I never saw online. So what I basically did is I made some blocks to get this up to where I wanted it. Then I went ahead and screwed it from both sides so it was rigid. Then I ran my 3 8 drill bit through where I wanted to pivot on both sides and then I ran my bolt through that. I used some washers to space out a quarter inch on each side on the inside so that I'd have free flow movement with my actual table. And then I just removed the screws. Now, as for the leg, I couldn't do the leg. My shop floor is unlevel like everyone's garage floor is, and so I'd have to level it every time it went out. So rather than that, I threw some 3 quarter or 3 eighths dowels in the side, and that levels it out to the table, not to the floor. Most of the time when I'm in the shop, I forget that I'm filming, and so I was kind of startled here and remembered that I was filming. It's what a fun project. Let me go over a few different things that I did versus the ones I saw online in a way that I made it more my style. Now, the first thing that I did is instead of having the cabinet, the actual table, come out and have feet that come down, I just went ahead and zipped in some oak dowels, some 3 8 dowels. Now, this will clearly hold it. I actually stood on top of this last night and got a bunch of uh, footprints all over it. But that actually will be just fine. Then I don't have the wigwam of the, of the legs. Then on this side, I went ahead and added the pull-out shelf, so for extra space. I also added two drawers that are four and a half inches deep. This one will actually have the air nozzle hooked into it, so if I need to just blow stuff off, I can just have it blown up, and I'll run that through the back of the cabinet. The top drawer is actually a little shallower on one side, and this will be for all my bits and wrenches that go with the unit. Then on the bottom, 
I added built-in dust collection to the cart, which will be run off the relay for the X car. So every time it turns on and off, the, the actual dust collection will click on, click on. It's a little four gallon rigid. It'll be just fine for what I'm using. And the reason why I put that in a cabinet is you can actually see how much quieter the vacuum is when the cabinet door is closed. It makes a big difference. And since I'm gonna build an enclosure for the CNC machine, having the vacuum closed up, it'll actually be a really quiet machine to run, so. Open. Closed. I actually really like that feature a lot. Then let's talk about the laptop stand. So, oh, my mic's going everywhere. So the laptop stand was basically pretty simple and straightforward. It's just some half inch pipe fittings. And it articulates and moves the way that you would need it to do that, to do so. And so I'll have my laptop up here and then on this pull out shelf, I'll be able to use my mouse and have plenty of space to work that way. The actual controller for the X-Carb will go right here with the automatic shut off and then the, the plugins and relays will be back here. And since I have a wireless mouse, once I've got it going, I can come over here to home the machine. So absolutely so cool. What a fun project. I definitely am going to get some plans out for this for you guys. It's just so much fun to do. And now because it's such a big machine, and it now it only takes up a 20 inch by 63 and three quarter inch footprint in my shop and it rolls and tucks right away. And everything that goes with the X-Carve will be on the machine. I hope you like videos like this. Like, subscribe, share, check out my other videos right here. I'm Stoner Erickson from Erickson Design Company and we built something. Ta-da!